one of the things that Freud did when he was interpreting dreams, and it's quite useful, you know, so if someone comes to me with a dream, then I have them tell me the whole dream, and then I get them to repeat it line by line, and then whenever they say a line and, and it, there's an object in it or a person or something like that, I ask them what that makes them remember or what that thing means to them or what comes to mind. And that's the associational technique. And it's predicated on the idea that your memory works by association. And you know that if you're daydreaming, you know, you go from one thing to another like a conversation does. And that you can take an idea that's at the center of a web of associations and by tracking the associations, you can kind of zero in on what the idea might mean. And then Jung expanded that by trying to, he called it to amplify the dream by thinking about, about narrative or literary or mythological similarities that, that might be associated with the narrative structure of the dream. And, and I think often that can be unbelievably useful, you know. And it's like the dream is an idea that's trying to come to birth. It's, it's partly formulated and then if you discuss it and amplify it, it's like you can speed along its transformation into a more articulated idea. And the dream is also something that, because your brain, your mind is trying to, with one foot in the unknown, it's trying to formulate what's out there in the unknown and to make it concrete. But, but it doesn't do that in one fell swoop. It doesn't just take potential and turn it into to articulated ideas. It has to dream up what's out there first, projects its imagination out there, to get a handle on what it might be, and then that's presented in the dream, and if you analyze the dream, you can make it more articulate. 